Hey everyone, thanks for joining us in today's video. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the future content. While you're here, give our video a like and make sure to leave us a comment with any questions you may have or suggestions for an upcoming video. If you'd like more of an in-depth look into our trading day, we'd love for you to join us in our live trade room for three days, and it's free, uh, free three-day trial. A link for that can be found in the description area below the video, or if you swing on over to ssftg.com, you can find the registration link there as well. All right, let's jump into the video for today. So for today's video, we're going to be talking about locating swing entry zones, and that's usually based off of market structure. So what do I mean, first of all? Market structure generally is just looking at a zone of interest that's been proven before, right? So if we look across here, very obvious, every time the market goes up here, it can't close above it, it starts rejecting it, wicks all over the place. That is a market structure. There's obviously something going on there. And then as far as swing entry zones, these are looking for zones that you could potentially look to scalp if you are a scalper, but there are also areas that you can look for for potential swing type trades trades from a scalper's perspective, a swing trade in, in my mind could be like 20 minutes long, but uh, keeping that in mind, it's where you can get in with minimal risk from a larger perspective while opening the door for larger potential downside targets. So when you're looking for these areas, the first thing that you need to do is look for a major area of structure. We need a location first. A good entry point is useless if it's not in the right place. So location is always first, and one of the very obvious locations while the market's driving down it forms a nice resistance and at first it doesn't really show a whole lot but then it starts rejecting a little bit more and then starts rejecting a little bit more and even creates a new zone that's a little bit wider market comes back up and resists out of that area again and when it comes back to it later it shows more proof and it ends up creating another zone of interest so it's obviously showing us a zone of structural importance the market moved up we tapped into the area, tried driving down, they got a quick move up, but that move very quickly failed right back down again, ended up trapping buyers in above huge bull bars, dumped right down. Beautiful bull run, starts turning right back down again. So what's going to end up happening here is based on the fact that we have really nice market structure, and in this case, a second sell, uh, you could be looking at the in, in however you want to enter them, but it's coming in the perfect location and you're combining that market structure along with whatever your entry technique is. Uh, it could be second entries, could be you name it, Fibonacci pullbacks, whatever. Uh, but really narrowing in on where those big zones of interest are, that's where the premium entry locations are going to start coming in. So if you zoom out a little bit further, and let's go back uh, a little ways here so we can't cheat. we got to look at something that's fresh, and then we'll zoom out a little bit further. And in terms of market structure, typically you should be able to see it if you zoom out. Uh, so what I'm looking at here is anything that forms a repetitive zone of interest down here, there's obviously something going on, right? There's a lot of support going on. Every time the market comes near this low, it gets pushed right back up again. So when it comes back, I'm going to be keeping an eye on that area. And when it comes back, I'm going to be keeping an eye on that area. And generally, you can gauge a lot of information just by how the market reacts. Just because one of your zones doesn't work or didn't hold doesn't mean that it's useless. That's a huge amount of information. A major level of support didn't hold and a lot of people were expecting it to. That means that there could be potentially people stuck on the wrong side of things. There's always the other side of the coin that you can use to your advantage to really kind of give you that extra information. And here we can see the market just got shattered through that area. So now if it comes back, buyers definitely bought in. We see they bought in. So if it comes back and they know that they're getting dumped on right now, you better believe that there's going to be some resistance there. That's a great level of market structure. So then we can look at it if the market comes back, and there you go, right? Pops right back up and forms a level of congestion. This is where sellers are beginning to position. Selling high, selling high, selling high, selling high, knowing that if it starts going up here, they're probably wrong. But if they're going to be right on the trade, the chance of a larger move down, the reward is significantly larger than the risk. And it's just a worthwhile type of trade. And that's the situation that we end up with here again. Based off of structure, we know that we broke through that. Buyers are weak. Sellers are trying to continue down. Buyers could also argue that they're trying to get the move up. 
but they get a lower high, lower high transition, that's no bueno, <laughs> and then they end up rolling back over. Regardless of how you look at it, that zone became a big area of interest, and if you go a little bit further in the day, you can see that it was resistance too. So that whole area is going to be a massive zone of interest even later in the day uh, that you can be potentially using. That's why we always want to be looking for those zones of structure. And not just the zones of structure, but once the market reaches those areas, what does it do, right? How does it respond to coming into those areas? Does it reject it? Does it blow right through it? Does it miss it? There's a lot of information that you can derive just from those areas. Because remember, there's a lot of people watching that area. They could have stops down there. Maybe they're breakout traders looking for shorts to break down. There's a lot of focus there from all kinds of different traders. And that usually is going to have a lot of volume. That's why there's usually so much back and forth there. Definitely something to keep an eye on. But hopefully you found that interesting useful, entertaining, and maybe something you can add to your tool belt. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email, jhb at sssftg.com. Until the next one, we'll see you all then. Thanks.